Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Space Exploration. There's been some things have occurred since I last played. Uh, one of them is that Factorio has now updated to version 1.1 and they've stuck a few new things in there. The map view has changed a bit. As you can see from this, we've now got these, um, you can have an, there's an option for putting these icons on the, on the map to show you where you're building stuff, which, um, I don't know, I've turned it on um, because it seems like it might be useful. You never know, I guess we'll find out. They've changed the icons over here as well, which all looks a lot prettier now, so that's quite nice. Um, and, the, and we've got these um, splodges on the on the railway lines to show where trains are going. So these are all... There's a lot of blue around here. Um, and there's one in there that's confused. I should probably go and have a look at that and find out why. That's interesting. I should um, need to check into that. But as you can see, as this train comes along here, the lights are all changing colour to um, to show... Well, show what colour they are, whether they're um, whether they're allowing other trains to come through or not. So that's, that's quite nice. It's... Um, I think the yellow is probably the area where the train has sort of reserved because it can't slow down fast enough to stop anywhere anywhere sooner than that. So yeah, that seems to be working quite well. Um, other stuff. There's supposed to be supposedly been some major lighting changes, although it appears to be daytime at the moment, so I can't show those to you. Um, but the idea behind those is that instead of things just giving off light, so there's a puddle of light around around any building that's burning stuff or whatever. They've they've made it a little bit cleverer, so instead of, so it's now actual bits of the building lighting up. So if we look at say um, a nuclear power plant would be a good one. If I can find it, here it is. So if we come back here when it's actually dark, we should find that these 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 windows and the and the heat pipes themselves are actually glowing rather than they're just being uh, diffuse light around the machines for no apparent reason. So I'll come back and have a look at those in, in a bit if I remember. Another thing I've noticed which I don't think was there before is a sort of vignette effect around the edge of the uh, the view when you're in map mode which looks kind of funky but I think it might be going to spoil the uh, the videos a little bit because I tend to just whip around in map mode. So what I'm going to try and do is, um, is be in live here's my guy running around mode instead and see how that goes. So, I've done a few things as well. I haven't just updated, although that was quite a big job with all the mods and things, waiting for those to update and then downloading them all. Uh, but one of the things I've done in here is I've started building up the various different types of armour you can have. So we've got the, the basic armour down here, which is basically wearing some iron plates, as far as I can tell. And that protects you from a little bit of stuff. Then you've got the next version up, which is made out of steel and, and uh, copper, and, and the original um, iron armour as well. That's the heavy armour. Then there's a modular one, which you, where, where you would chuck in some advanced circuits. So it's a bit cleverer. And that's the one I've been using until now. And that allows you to have an equipment grid, which is um, five, five, a fairly small one, so five by five. But that's big enough to shove in a couple of shields, uh, some solar panels, and a couple of batteries, that sort of thing. Just enough to to make it useful. Or oh, a couple, or roboports as well. That's, what, that's another major thing I've been using it for. So it's enough to be useful, but not really enough space to have any of the, sort of the, the powerful endgame stuff. The next one up from that is the um, what's this, this modular, no modular armor. I'm very confused. Modular armor, yeah, and then power armor. Right, okay. <laughs> I've sort of skipped over this one because um, by the time I got around to building it, I already had all of the stuff there to to upgrade to the next level. So this one's just just kind of been skipped over. But this basically is it's more or less the same as the previous one, but with a slightly bigger inventory. So that's gone from five by five to seven by seven, and then you got the power armor Mark II. Uh, which is has an even bigger inventory, which is 10 by 10, so a really good amount of space. Um, and oh, it's moved. It used to be down, shown down here with the ammunition. Oh, it's over here now. Move to the bottom left. Right there we go. So that's given me, as you can see, a much bigger inventory here. And so I shoved in a couple of exoskeletons. We've still got the uh, adaptive armor, which is not great, but it does it does work. It gives me a bit of extra protection. But now I've got something a bit better. I should upgrade that. Still running on solar panels, which is a bit rubbish, but you know, for now. And I've, but there's plenty of room now, so I've got all the rubber ports and the, all the batteries in there. Um, battery power is, is good at the moment, so I can yeah, I can now move around a bit faster than I could before. Um, I don't know how, how noticeable it is well, on, uh, on the stone tiles it's a lot faster. But it's now I now move at a, bit, a slightly less frustrating speed, and so, so I can get to places a bit more quickly. So, one of the main things you need for the uh, for the Power Armor Mark II is a load of modules, uh, Module Mark II specifically. So I started building those here, and you actually need the blue ones and the green ones, but I started this one making red ones because I wanted them for something else. Uh, and modules are great because they allow you to, you can come along to an existing factory, and you, and you often have these slots in them that you can put things into, you can put modules into, and as it says there, they will add various different bonuses. 
And there are three different types of module. You've got the um, speed modules, which, as, as, the as the name implies, they make the machine run faster. So it does ex it does exactly the same as it normally would, but it uses more energy and it runs a lot faster. So the basic ones, you get a, you get a 20% speed boost. The Mark IIs, you get a 30% speed boost. The Mark IIs, you get a 40% speed boost. But each of those come with double that in the power, double that in energy consumption, or even worse for the Mark ones. Um, and they also give you a bump in pollution as well, which is well, depending on how you feel about biters, can be a can be a problem. Next up is the productivity modules. Now these are the really exciting ones. These ones that I found really really useful, because they mean that your um, your factory, any machine you put these in, will make more products than it normally would out of the same amount of um, inputs. So each time, so this one has a um, productivity bonus of plus four. This one's plus six. This one's plus eight. They're not huge bonuses, but you can put two in the uh, in a in a, in a, in a uh, assembly machine Mark II, and I think three or four in an assembly machine Mark III. I can't remember. But they actually they quite literally give you something for nothing. So well, not not quite nothing. The machine does run a lot more slowly and produces more pollution, but uh, and uses a lot more energy. But as as far as once you've got to the point where you don't care about pollution and you don't really care about energy, energy consumption, it's pretty much something for nothing because you don't need as much input, res input resources in order to make them. Now, there are a few restrictions on them. You can't use them in anything that produces an end product. So something that produces, for example, a construction robot, you won't be able to use the productivity modules on that uh, just because that's the rules. However, on something like... Um, green circuits or um, flying robot frames something like that you can whack these in there and then for every 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 well it's a, it's a plus eight percent productivity so every time it finishes um, what 12 12 and a half normal builds you'll get a free one as well and you can as I said you can put more than one of those in in a machine as well so that would put it up to 16 so every six times you get you get an extra free one as well and that doesn't sound like an enormous amount, but if you can scatter enough of them through your factor factory um, production cycle, those sort of add up quite quite quickly. Because something like um, let's take let's take the a rocket component for example, because that's the classic case of being the, the best place to put them to start with. You've got the uh, the rocket component. You'll get at least 24% bonus on because you, there's at least three slots in a, uh, in a in the rocket silo. I'll check that in a minute. Um, but you can also use it on the um, rocket control modules, on the low density structures, and probably on the heat shield tiles and other things that go into each rocket component. So you, these things add up fairly quickly, or they multiply up fairly quickly, because you're using them on, on lots of tiers of your factory. So, so it can reduce your um, resource usage by an enormous amount. And given how much I'm, I seem to be struggling with, particularly copper and stone at the moment, that's going to be really rather useful. Um, and then finally we've got the efficiency modules. To be honest, these ones I don't care about quite so much. They, they reduce the amount of energy you use and they reduce the amount of pollution as well. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, they usually it's usually better to use the module slot for something else. And all the modules cost the same amount to make as well. They're um, a pile of basically a pile of circuits and previous modules. Oh, and batteries as well, of course. I forgot about those. I think that might be a, um, a space exploration thing. I'm, I'm not sure. So basically by throwing lots and lots of extra circuits into your uh, into your um, machines you can make them run much more quickly more efficiently uh, or more productively which is all very very nice um yes so that's good uh then uh, i think that's all i was going to say about those oh yeah one of the other things i need to build for my um, for my armor is the uh, i'm just getting distracted by all the new graphics across the top here that's all very nice um, is the 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 the, the uh, Mr. Fusion from Back to the Future? <laughs> I can't believe this is the one thing they've not that they're, where they've used sort of somebody else's um, pictures of things and not got around to replacing it yet. Uh, anyway, these uh, the uh, they've now called it a portable um, radioactive thermo radio th radio thermoelectric generator. That's what RTG stands for, isn't it? I can't remember. I was I, I was always having trouble pronouncing it in the um, in Angel Bob's, and it's the same problem here. Anyway, these are fantastic power power supplies for, for your armor. Uh, they produce, they basically, they don't take any fuel at all unless you count the uranium fuel cells you need to build them with. And they'll just provide 300 kilowatts of power forever. And that's fantastic. That's just what you need when you're running around with a power armor with a load of exoskeletons in it. Because these things take, what, um, 200 kilowatts when you're actually moving. 
so, so you can discharge your batteries quite quickly when you're when you're running with those, especially if you're trying to charge them up with um, with solar panels, which only produce 30 kilowatts and only run during the work during the day. So these are much much better. Uh, they are much bigger though. So that's interesting. I hadn't hadn't really thought about comparing them like this. So these are one by one and they produce 30. These are four by four and they produce 300. So it's actually less per square they take up, but they work during the night as well. So. Yeah, I, I, do, I do need to build myself one of those. So I need to wander over to the um, to the nuclear power plant and uh, nick some ur uranium fuel cells for this. And then I'll be able to run around much more uh, long term. <laughs> so, the next thing I built, moving up here, is this ludicrous gun here. Um, <laughs> that is genuinely ludicrous. I know that must be a what? The, the engineer is probably getting close to a meter across, and that barrel's almost the same size. So this is, we're looking at what a gun with a meat, a caliber of about a meter. That's, that is absolutely ridiculous. So this is a meteor defense installation. It's uh, an enormous gun that, is, that shoots down the asteroids that are falling in from from space to destroy chunks of your base. And every so often it'll fire. It uses these um, these projectiles that cost. They're, they're not too expensive. It's basic circuits, batteries and steel, that's that's fine. Okay. I, I've got oodles of that around. However, I, I did read after, after I built this, it, it only shoots one meteor at a time. So, actually this probably isn't defending my uh, base properly. I'm going to need to have four of these, I think, because meteor showers sometimes come in, uh, in fours. Uh, it's not built very well for expansion at the moment, but I could probably move this all out a bit, spread spread it out a bit so there's um, another two of these arranged above and one to the side and then I can have one of these machines in the middle feeding all of them and then perhaps a second one that just feeds the other one so we'll um, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see, I, I'm, I'm sure I can squeeze in some more though um, and yeah that seems to work, every so often it fires and then takes about five minutes to reload It if we look somewhere it tells me about the Yes, there we go. The shooting speed is 0.2 per second, so it takes presumably about five seconds between shots, assuming it's got enough power to recharge itself. Um, and the asteroids, uh, meteorites, come in a bit faster than that, so we're going to need we're going to need a bit more uh, defences than than this, I suspect. So carrying on up the uh, up up the bus, next thing I built was the um, was a satellite uh, a rocket silo. Uh, that's is that actually working yet? Have I got everything it needs? No, I haven't got rocket fuel yet. So this this takes in um, various components. We've got the heat shield tiles, low density structures, rocket control units, and rocket fuel, and it'll build your rocket. And you need to you need to give it um, that much of it, and it'll. And I think you need to do that a hundred times over to make a full rocket. And then the lock, rocket will launch when you when you stick something in there. Uh, now that's going to mean I'm going to need to make satellites as well. And satellites turn out to be rather. Rather tricky, should we say? Um, there's quite a lot that goes into those, and it comes from all over the place. And oh my goodness, <laughs> I I may um, may end up just using uh, uh, logistics bots to bring in the components for these because that looks like it's just going to be a massive faff to get everything into the same place. Um, that said, most of this is on the bus. The only thing that isn't is the solar panels and the accumulators, and they're already on being flown around by uh, by bots anyway so I think that's probably going to be fairly reasonable oh and the radar but they're fairly easy to make so I think I can I, yeah that's not going to be too bad and you don't need a huge number of satellites I don't think or at least I won't at first who knows what I'll need in the future I don't know how many rock launches I'm going to need for space exploration right that brings us to the top of the bus have I talked about everything I was going to do for this yes I think I have so there's the ludicrous gun here and that's that as I said protects against meteorites and it sort of works with the um yeah, this umbrella defense thing here. So one's for meteorites, the other's for the, uh, the coronal mass ejection doohickeys. And yeah, that's... Um, I don't know, I haven't had another coronal mass ejection, but I've, I've got it plugged in now because I've got oodles and oodles of power, so I thought I might as well. Um, yeah, as you can see, the uh, to be honest, my solar is basically providing enough for the base, but as it, as it gets bigger, it just, it just means I don't need to worry about um, putting down huge numbers of solar panels everywhere. The nuclear is kicking in from time to time and uh, covering the gap between, so my accumulators probably just aren't even getting touched, so they're a bit of a waste of resources, but never mind, they were useful while I was using them. The other thing I've been doing is trying to sort of, I had this idea of, 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 I was hoping that this area over here was just going to be a bit of a promontory with that I could, I could seal off. So around here it looks like it's okay, there's not much, there's no more biters, there's no way, there's no way for the biters to get across here. But then we get down here, and I suspect this is just going to be a landmass going off forever in this direction. Um, so I, 
I haven't really decided quite what I want to do here yet. I, can, I could build a wall from here to here and block this bottom part off and then one across here and then I don't know what to do over here. It's, it's a little, little bit tricky and it's kind of out, outside artillery range at the moment. So I need to drive out there with the tank or go for a run with the exoskeletons and have a look around and decide exactly what I'm going to do over here. But there's, this is basically the one corner of my base where the biters can still attack from. Um, there's a few a few worms left inside here, but they're they're basically harmless. I can blow them up with a rocket launcher if I ever do want to expand into that area. And then the entire other three sides of the base, I've got my wall round. It's just solid turrets the whole way around, um, and this sort of little tumor sticking off the top of it. So yeah, that's basically okay. Now the next, so obviously I want to, I want to get I want to get rockets going. That's that's why I built this thing, um, and is my has been my goal for quite a while, just to. To get on to the actual space part of space exploration rather than the, sort of the faffing around whilst being pummeled with asteroids uh, so i think that that is my main push at the moment so the, the next thing is going to be to get the rocket fuel going and rocket fuel isn't too difficult as far as i remember it's just um it's oil and different type of oil yeah there we go so it's light oil and solid fuel which is made from oil i think i'm probably going to do that over here in the oil area because I've got lots of light oil here so I can just tap off here and turn it into start turning it into um, in, into solid fuel and into, uh, in, in, into and then into rocket fuel and then try and squeeze I was gonna say try and squeeze another station and I don't need to worry about having it inside the inside the walls anymore I can put, put pull these down and put it over here somewhere so that's not gonna be too bad hush uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll do I'll do that over he, over here in this gap, I suspect, uh, because there's plenty of room there, and get that get that running, get get nice train loads of rocket fuel coming out and going onto the sort of the part way up the bus stop here. Here, <laughs> bus stop. Um, so I'll, yeah, push those in on here, get them get running up the side here, and that that should, so that should be fairly straightforward. I also want to start then running all my trains off rocket fuel, so I'll probably pump pump some of it. Yeah, in fact, if I'm doing it here, that's not too far to get it down into this area into the depot. Maybe I, I don't know if I can turn all these belts around without having a massive hissy fit. So I'll probably just run a, run a belt all the way down here and then feed it in from the bottom. Uh, but running them off rocket fuel should make them go a bit faster. Let's have a look. So process fuel, we get 175 and 112. That one's 180 and 115. Okay, so it's actually not much of a change. <laughs> Maybe I won't bother. Oh, you can make this out of vulcanite. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. Because I've got all this vulcanite that I've not been using. Um, not you. Do I not have FNEI installed anymore? Maybe that's another one I've lost with the um, the upgrade. Okay, so uh, looking at that, crushed vulcanite, washed vulcanite. What's it making? What's it making it from? It's a little pile of red powder, which I think is probably that one. Okay, so there are a couple of extra steps in there. I'd need to crush it in a pulverizer, which I do have, I'm making some of those, and then add water to it. Eh. I don't know if it's worth it, I've already got the oil. Although that said, it would be good to have something to use the vulcanite for, because I've got it building up in my um, core mining facility, from my core mining facility over here, and there's quite a bit of it coming out, so I've got 22,000 in there at the moment. Eventually this station will fill up, and I'm going to have to start doing something with it. So, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do that. That seems like quite a good way of making rocket fuel, since it's, an, it's another option in there. Uh, then, ooh, that's a big jump. That, okay, so the, the higher level fuels don't make that much of a difference to the vehicle's top speed. It goes from 112 with that, 115, and then 115 for nuclear fuel as well. But the acceleration is much, much better and you probably don't use as much fuel so that or rather one fuel will last much much longer because there's 1. <laughs> 1 1.21 gigawatts thank you doc um in the nuclear fuel and 100 only 100 megajoules in the uh, in the rocket fuel and 10 megajoules in the in the processed fuel yeah. i don't really care I and mean, it might be nice to put nuclear fuel in the tank because then the acceleration and fuel lasting forever would be quite nice but otherwise i don't think i care very much uh, yeah, so that's those are going to that's going to be my next thing. I want to get I want to get the rocket silo rocketing. 
which means I need to start making rocket fuel, which I can do over here, or perhaps in the Vulcanite. I can hear a helicopter. That's very loud and thundery. Hope you can't hear it. And yeah, I want to think about clearing out some more space down here because there's some uranium there. That's a nice patch of a million, which I want. There's oh, some uranium down there, which is it's only half a million, but I still kind of want it. Um, there's a little patch of it up there. I also want this stone because stone is a thing that I'm really short of. Um, copper, uh, copper and stone are basically apparently my problem things at the moment. So we look here. The copper seems to be well, it, it, it's flowing through. There's only 13,000 on this side though, so it's not flowing through fast. It's it's not really being made fast enough. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do about that. I'd like to have to think about it. Stop giving me tips. I know how to do all this stuff. And then stone. Stone is just absolutely pathetic. I, I don't even know where stone is supposed to come from these days and whether there is actually a, a mine that's made producing any of it. Iron stone here, this one. Okay, that's feeble. No, one, no, no wonder I'm, I'm short of it. And there's a bit coming out from the core mining, which is quite nice. Copper, coal. Yeah, I think that might be my only proper stone mine. So I definitely need more stone mining mines out there. The problem is, oh, there's, there's one there. There aren't a great. There doesn't seem to be a great deal. Oh, here's a couple of good ones. Yeah, maybe I'll get. Maybe I'll go out down this way because I haven't I haven't expanded this way for a while. And that actually looks quite nice with the way these. Um, in fact, this is really good. Yes, I'm definitely coming this way. <laughs> with the way all of these are laid out, and with the lakes as well. If I can, if I can get my if I can bring, a, bring an artillery train down to about here, then I can shell the, was, the proverbial was name out of all of this area. Clean it all up. Then I can run a wall down from here, probably somewhere over here, straight down here to, the, to this lake. And that'll get me this, this copper, this stone, both of these stones. And then over here I can, well, I could be lazy and run it up here to start with. And that'll give me that iron as well, which I don't really need at the moment, but I probably will at some point. Um, yeah, I think that's a good, that's a that's an excellent plan. That'll get me big copper mine, three big stone mines. Ooh, I kind of want that. Oh, and it get me yeah, get me that copper one as well. So two big copper mines, two three big stone mines. That's going to make make a lot of difference. That's going to solve my resource problems for a good while to come. Okay, that's going to be yes, a definite push that way. Forget these ones up here; they're much smaller and much more awkward to get. I'm going. I'm, I'm going to go out this way. Okay, those. Are, that's going to be my next. My, my next couple of things to do. In fact, I might go after the resources first because I, I really need stone. It's going to be my, my green circuits are going to be come, grinding to a halt from lack of stone at some point fairly soon. I suspect uh, they haven't yet, which is impressive, but they probably will. Red circuit. Maybe I'm not quite. What's missing here? Oh, copper. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I need to boost copper production. Right, okay, so things are going pretty well, but it's time to go out expanding. The factory must grow. Thank you for watching, I'll get out and blow some stuff up and uh, show you what it's all about next time. I'll see you then.